Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, we're having a, another look today at progress on turning the uh, Batman uh, Thompson Friends Scarlowe model into something that more closely resembles um, Tally Lynn on which the, the character was based. Um, if you remember from last time um, I gave you a bit of a, an update on where we were basically everything had been stripped down all the bodywork changes I wanted to do had been done uh, and everything was in a grey primer. Um, Things have moved on a little since then. Um, as you can see, uh, we've got some first rounds of painting on. So everything got a black, uh, a black coat over the grey primer uh, first. Um, some of these parts are just going to stay black and then get extra details added. Um, so the the kind of foot plate area, which if you remember from last time, I'd, I'd hacked into two pieces um, to deal with uh, doing the bodywork in the way I, in the way I wanted. These are going to stay. These are going to stay black, um, and as I say we'll get some details. Uh, normally, you'd expect to see maybe the buffer beams um, painted uh, red and then detailed, but um, I've been doing a bit of research and talking to some people who um, have volunteered on the line and things like that. Um, and the suggestion is that possibly prior to preservation, um, the loco would have had black buffer beams. Um, that was certainly true of some of the other locos on the line. Um, and looking at old photos, it doesn't look like these beams were were red. Um, I mean, it's always difficult telling black and white photos, and especially with red not not showing up well on black and white photos as a, as, as a different particular shade of shade of grey or anything. Um, but yeah, the suggestion is they would have been painted uh, painted black. So um, I'm probably just going to pick out the metalwork. Um, at length the uh, actual wooden parts um wooden parts black um there'll be there'll be some painting i might paint the the remaining sandbox um but basically these bits will be left uh, black and just detailed um other things painted black which will be a bit harder to see is i've painted um some of the chassis blocks so i haven't stripped this down completely because i don't want to risk taking it apart too much more than i need to um but i've i've put some um matte black primer um brush painted it onto the edges um where i can get a brush in it's not particularly neat but then it doesn't need to be um it just needs to kind of soften the kind of glow of the shiny block you can see the shiny block up here um it's really quite really quite glossy um so i've just turned that down a little bit there'll probably be a bit more weathering um goes on under there once the model's assembled um i will have to do some soldering at some point because there's a as a wire come loose, I've actually resoldered these a couple of times already. Um, it seems to be a common failing. I mean, obviously, once once the once the wire's broken, um, getting it back onto the circuit board, there were through holes that were soldered. These wires were soldered into originally. Um, clearing those out to resolder was a bit of a pain, um, but it, it should never have broken off really in the first place. I was really careful uh, when stripping it down, but apparently a number of other people who have stripped their models down and and um, and detailed and repainted. I've had the same problem with the wires coming all the way from the circuit board. So I think it looks like a a common problem with these um, with these models when they were first, certainly from the first batch, um, that just the soldering wasn't the soldering wasn't brilliant. But anyway, that's that's something that's relatively easy to fix and actually will give me uh, a chance to play with it with a new toy. I've got a, a new soldering iron which will probably turn up in a in a future video. Um, I might do a review depending on how well how well that turns out. But anyway, yeah, so that's the, that's the chassis block, not much there. Um, but the main thing, as you can probably tell, is that I've um, picked colour uh, and started on some work. So I've been using a green. Um, this is always my plan was for a kind of dark, a dark green that I'm going to weather to almost black. <coughs> um, it's actually this um, Model Air paint um, described as light green. Um, 71022. Um, I like the German name, Helgrun instead. Um, I think this is the one I used on the the one of the other tiny models recently, the um, Miguel and Pratt, the tiny, tiny little 009 model. Um, I think it's the same colour, but I'm going to weather it much more heavily so it will look definitely look different. Um, so, so far I've done uh, the wrappers around the cylinder, so this is just kind of the piece that wraps round, leaving the front and backs uh, black um, that looks that looks okay um, I had real problems I did this with the green with the airbrush and I had real issues with my airbrush I don't know quite what I'd done when I used it last time but 
it started off fine and then part way through the first the first spraying um it clogged up um i mean this is this uh, the paint i'm using this the model air um is specifically designed and formulated for brushing for airbrushing straight from the bottle you don't need to thin it um but it was almost like it was drying in the in the brush right down by the nozzle um and i just literally pulled full back on the on the air and i wasn't getting no paint out um flushed it through with some some ipa and it, it it seemed to seem to settle down but then it did it again um so i'm not sure whether there's a particular problem with the brush or whether i just not cleaned it properly when i put it away last time um and that was causing causing it to to stick i think the last thing i sprayed with it before this was a, a gloss varnish so there's a chance that i just didn't clean a tiny little bit of the gloss varnish out and it was making it sticky somewhere um I don't know. I've now given it a really good strip down and clean, so hopefully that won't won't reappear. Um, in general, I'm not a fan of the airbrush. Um, it's a really useful tool and it gives a really nice paint and coat, something I could never do with a brush. Um, but I always find it such hard work. Um, the whole kind of setup and clean down and, and stuff just takes, takes forever. Um, I mean, all my original models that I painted, um, things like the tiny little Huts and Hunslet in 09, they were painted just with aerosol cans. And um, you know you can you can have done a, a full paint of a model in a, in a minute something that small, um, and have everything tidied away and just wait for the paint to dry. Whereas with the airbrush, you like you know you're, you're looking at least half an hour to properly properly clean it up and put it away. So um, yeah, not not a huge fan, but it does give it does give nice uh, nice paint coating. So I can't can't complain too much. Maybe I just need a more expensive airbrush. If anybody wants to <laughs> leave suggestions in the comments of. Uh, of what of, of of what airbrushes they recommend mine's a really really cheap um one it came with a, a really cheap um compressor it's not um it's just a yeah i don't know how it generates the air it's not what you would think of as a kind of cylindrical tank and compressor it's uh anyway i need a better airbrush probably is the answer but um yeah anyway i've got green paint on the on the outside of the cab um you can see i didn't necessarily it's a bit difficult i've i've, I've hacked bits off the back of the cab and trying to contain the rivets i've obviously not necessarily um smoothed this as flat as i should um i'm hoping proper weathering and stuff and i can hide some of that from a distance it's not so not so visible unless the lights um the lights bad um inside the cab i've gone for the usual kind of black at the bottom um ivory uppers the black was just the under primer undercoat so it's nice and smooth um trying to do the inside i decided i just was going to brush paint it most of it when it's on the track you're not going to see especially if i've got a, a crew in there but it's um yeah it's not the best um ivory coat it didn't go on particularly well it's just getting the brushing was a bit of a pain to be honest uh, but i'm going to turn it down um there'll be there'll be some washes and possibly some weathering powders uh going in there to turn it turn it down a little but it, it's it's looking all right um and then the body um has survived reasonably well i might have just broken the lamp bracket on the front which will be a pain if i have but um I, I think i caught it when doing the masking and it's now looking a bit fragile so there's a chance that that might get snipped off entirely um and just left without i'm not entirely sure yet because it's going to be a pain to um to fix that and then re repaint um anyway so yeah so i masked up um the best i could so I masked off the smoke box, masked off the inside of the cab, um, and then um, yeah, and then sprayed the spread the green, and it's come out looking really really nice. Uh, I've then back, been back in with the black on a paintbrush and touched it up. So the the actual um, boiler here um, is black, um, but the the dome is is green. So um, I couldn't work out a decent way of masking that. So I've just uh, sprayed it green and then went back in and painted it black. Um, Obviously the black's not quite as neat as it would have been had it been sprayed, but again, I think a lot of that will disappear once the cab's on and, and everything else. Um, yeah, so, um, but it's it's starting to come together. I mean, you can kind of, I can rest the, rest the cab in place just about, there you go. And it's starting to, it's starting to look pretty good. I mean, you can already see that the, the, the um, ivory on the inside now doesn't look quite so bad when it's kind of in shadow and stuff. It's actually not too bad at all um obviously all the details still to fit so 
the windows look a bit rough at the moment but they've not got their um, turned brass surrounds um, in yet and that kind of thing so that will all that will all neaten up over over time um, and obviously as I said I'm going to weather this um, so that it's a lot darker green this is a bit bright yet um, but first of all I'm going to pick out all the details in the cab because um, I obviously I want to do the weathering once it's reassembled um, so that I'm kind of consistent across the parts um, so yes yeah, so I'll, I'll do that do that next and I've been looking at a bit at the weathering so I've got one of the cast off pieces I'm doing another round of printing of simplex parts and this one failed for some reason so I've just been using it as a test so this is the the same green just brush painted onto the part um, and then this is the green um, with an initial attempt at some weathering so what I've done here essentially is just splodged on a whole bunch of um, black paint um, in fact the primer the same primer I used to touch in where I've um, where I've had to brush paint the black back um, and then um, washed off with with a brush covered in water um, and you can see it really darkens the green but also helps pick out pick out the details on this piece so um, I'm probably going to do that as an initial initial pass once everything's put back together um, it'll help kind of pick up all the details around the rivets and stuff and, and any crevices and things on the parts um, and then I'll go in and, and do some do some more weathering um, you know rust and dirt and things elsewhere but I think that will that will turn turn the green down nicely and obviously I can kind of do it possibly multiple times or heavier in certain areas than others um, to to change the effect a bit as I go along but I think that's that's going to look reasonably good I think I can go a bit darker than this probably wash a bit less off um, or as I say do a couple of passes um, but that'll be for another video but for now um, as I say this uh, this project to essentially destroy a rather expensive uh, model in order to turn it into something else um, is is going quite well I'm, I'm quite happy with this uh, as I say the, the the finish with the airbrush after the the problems has come out quite nicely and I think I'm happy with the with the colors and things so it's uh, yeah the I'll probably pick out the details reassemble do a first pass of the wash um, and, and the weathering uh, and then another video um, show you where we've got to before I do the final kind of uh, weathering detailing fit and all the final little parts um, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So it turns out I got to doing the first weathering pass um, much sooner than I expected. Uh, I didn't think I'd have time to, to do it for a few days um, but in the end, um, I just went ahead and had a go. Um, scary, just putting black paint all over something you've um, you've just spent ages working on. But there we go. Um, so I did the cylinders first um, as a test again. Um, it's quite subtle on these. So what I've found is obviously it works best where there's details to pick out. So like the crease here is a bit more um, defined than the edge of the wrappers. But it's definitely turned turn down the colour in a way where it's not entirely um, it's not all one colour there's definitely variation um, in there it's a bit difficult to see on the on the camera on that part it's a bit easier to see on the body itself so um, you can see certainly here oh you can see I haven't cleaned up properly yet um, it's definitely darkened the colour but it's also picked out the rivets a lot more you've got lots of dirty kind of ragma almost like you know where somebody's tried to clean it in real life on the paintwork um, the domes again not quite so good because it's completely um, smooth um, looks like you know the, the it had rigid, rid, rivets on it originally but I took them off um, because it looks like a, a welded tank um, which I think is more prototypical I think that's the way around I, I'm struggling to remember now whether the Skyloe model had rivets or not and I've just not put them on anyway there's no rivets so um, it's picked out detail around the water filler cap nicely and the little um, pipe down here but the rest of the tanks less uh, less obviously um, colored this side's possibly a bit bit better um, obviously there'll be another weathering pass on this so it will look different again this side here um, lots kind of variation in color and marks where it's been wiped etc um, the roof not ideal but again it's not terrible on the front um, front face looks looks quite nicely detailed there's plenty of muck got in and around all these bits uh, and again the back um, it's picked out the rivets and, and stuff quite nicely um, you can also see that we've now got a representation 
um, the cab um, has been painted. This matches um, the best view I have currently of the inside of the cab. Um, as I say, it's it's just meant for kind of detail. So there's the there's the brake wheel. I think it's brake wheel. Um, gauge glasses, pipe work's been picked out in in brass. Uh, you can also see the ivy's been turned. The ivory colour's been turned down slightly. This wasn't deliberate necessarily. Uh, what happened was I I put some masking tape over the inside of the the window holes so that when I slapped black paint all over the back and um, and then wash it off I was not going to get too much paint inside the cab um, that didn't necessarily hold very well um, so I've gone ahead and kind of wiped off some of the um, just some of the, the paint that seeped through um, and that's that stopped it from um, from going going everywhere um, with obviously streaky runs from the black paint but also it helped turn down the, the ivory um, as you said, as I said in the last in the previous part, I was going to reassemble it before I did the wash. But what I decided was that, um, given I was going to slap a whole bunch of paint around and um, a whole bunch of water, it was probably best kept away from the motor. Um, and I realised that, of course, all the green parts I'm trying to weather are all kind of self-contained here; they don't extend down onto the footplate or anything. Um, so it, I have screwed the cab on. This is now screwed back on. Um, hopefully, I won't have to. To take it off, um, there's a chance I might to fit the fit the um, the window surrounds. But essentially, it's um, this bit's put back together uh, without it going anywhere near the motor. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. It, I mean, it looks suitably weathered, suitably mucky. Um, I've put the lamp back at Brack. I made a new one. It's a bit bigger than the old one, but it's a bit more solid as well. Fortunately, I'd still got the tool I made for bending these up, um, so that was nice and easy to to bend another one. Um, with the right, I just had to find the right thickness of brass to actually fit my tool. Um, but yeah, so that's the, another view of the cab from the other side. Um, as I say, a lot of that detail and the mess and the muck will probably get hidden um, again when I, if I put a crew in here. And as I say, when it's on the model at a distance on a on a track, you won't really see inside anyway. Um, so yeah, so really happy with how that's gone so far. Um, it's definitely turned down the colour uh, quite a lot. Um, added lots of variation. Um, now I can go back in and pick out some some rust and some other weathering bits and pieces, uh, and I can start to add on the the other detail parts. So there's things like um, there's a, a ra there's a handrail across the cab side, the tank side here for helping the firemen get up to refill the water. Um, there's some handles for the sides of the cab. Um, struggling to remember exactly how they fit now, but there are some handles here. There's a handle around the smoke box. As I say, there's the there's the turn surrounds I did for the windows, there's the buffers to fit, um, all that kind of thing. And as I say, there will be more more weathering as I go along, um, hopefully to kind of turn some of it down. As, as the first attempt, the first time I've tried this with the black paint, I think it's worked out quite well. As I said, this cab side I'm not so convinced about. It seems to be lighter at the bottom, darker at the top, which I think would be wrong way around. It would The, the grime would run down in the wet. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But um, yeah, I can probably hide some of that again when I do some more weathering. Uh, but for now it's looking um, it's looking good I think so uh, yeah so um, probably is now time to start reassembling it onto the onto the chassis um, <clears throat> and then adding the final detailing parts as we go um, I think that'll be that'll be the the way forward uh, but we'll get to that in the in the next video um, for now yeah happy with that as a as a first stage I think suitably suitably mucky um, is what I was going for and I think that's worked out quite nicely.